We're at the Chino Airport with Rick Lefevre. Rick is the best titanium welder I've ever met, and he's going to give us some hands-on demonstrations of the techniques for TIG welding titanium. But Rick, would you first start by showing us your race car and some of the titanium details on it? I'd be glad to. Very cool. Rick, this engine is phenomenal. I know that you've made most of the parts we're looking at, but what's underneath all of this? Well, it's loosely based on a big block Chevy. It's 526 cubic inches with four turbochargers on it, and it runs on alcohol, and it makes approximately 3,000 horsepower. Rick, the engine is phenomenal. Show us some of the fabricated titanium parts you've made. Here we are at the interior. Lots of titanium in here. We have a titanium drive shaft loop, drive shaft tunnel, the shifter mounts, the bell housing, all the pedal assemblies are all titanium, and all this has been chamber welded, and we're going to show you how to do that next. Okay, the most important thing I think in TIG welding titanium is cleanliness. You can't have the parts clean enough. Um, the best way I've found is you can scotch bright your parts and clean them up. You can also use a stainless steel wire brush, one that hasn't touched steel or aluminum. Make it your specific titanium brush. You can brush the joints as you need them to clean any of the contaminants off. After you're done with cleaning them, you can take some degreaser on a paper towel and wipe down all your joints with a degreaser to get every little bit of oils and dirt and dust off. The reason we wear gloves is you don't even want to get a fingerprint on a piece of titanium and if you weld through that it'll contaminate the weld. So you want to wipe down all your parts, all your welding rod needs to be wiped down with a degreaser. Obviously your tungsten you're going to clean. Even the side cutters that you'll have inside the chamber or clipping welding rod, you want to make sure there's no oil or grease on the cutters as you uh, clip the rod and trim it. So you just want to make sure everything is very clean before you weld it. Now that we've cleaned the parts, hooked the purge lines into them, we purge the parts for about 15 to 20 minutes. All the oxygen will be out of them. And we're going to set the pre flow at about three seconds on the machine so that we get some argon flowing around the part before we tack weld. And then the post flow is about eight seconds. So when we're done tack welding, the argon will keep flowing around it while the weld is cooling. So let's go ahead and tack weld these parts together. One other important thing about when you're welding titanium is, you know you're used to dipping the rod in and out. You can't bring the rod out very far because if you expose it out into the oxygen and dip it back in, you're going to contaminate that weld. Okay, now that we have the part tacked, we're going to put a weld right up across here. Here we go. Here's an example of a kind of a homemade chamber. It started out as a little sandblast cabinet that you can buy at hardware stores. And you can tape the seams up so no oxygen gets in. And this one I made a little stainless floor in it and then welded a stainless rod to it to hook the ground clamp. And then I drilled a hole over here that the torch, you can feed your torch through and then tape that up so it seals that. And then it has a little valve right here, it's just a tire valve. And you can purge your oxygen out of there. And there's some fittings in the back side that you can hook your purge lines up to to fill it up with argon. Reach in and do your welding right through the gloves with your parts inside. And it's a relatively inexpensive way to go to build your own little purge cabinet. And next we'll take a look at an inflatable purge cabinet. Okay, what we have here 
is an inflatable chamber. And what this does, we inflate this with argon so that you have a completely inert atmosphere that you can weld your titanium in. We got the chamber inflated, our parts are inside, the torch is in there, everything's taped up and sealed, so it looks like we're ready to go over and start welding. Here's our finished part welded. This happens to be a titanium control arm. It comes out pretty much looking like polished nickel and with no discoloration. It gives a nice smooth bead and a good penetration. Welding titanium in a chamber is definitely the best way to go. Great. Thanks Rick. Your work will be an inspiration for us.